Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday worship service. Today is May 14th, um, also known as the sixth Sunday of Easter, but more importantly, Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day. We have a few announcements uh, as we begin today's worship. Um, our church's goal this year is to read the Bible. So we want to encourage uh, our church members to read the Bible this year. The reading plan is available upon request. The Grace Market yard sale happened yesterday. I thank everyone who participated and made it awesome. And we have uh, one more announcement, and that is today is the Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day once again. The church prepares some flowers, and also thank you, Janelle and Sunny, for preparing these wonderful roses. <laughs> so, at this time, uh, I want to invite everyone, if you're able, please stand and let's begin today's worship with the opening prayers. Mm. Actually. The slide um, yeah, doesn't look updated, but if we if we can still sing last week's if we want. <laughs> Cause you take me up, sing cause you're there. 
Please remain standing for the time of call to worship. From the north and south, from the east and west, all are welcome here. With hands raised high, or hearts quietly pondering, we come to worship God. Bringing our love, opening our minds together, we draw near to God, near to each other, and near to Christ, the Word of God. Please be seated. And now let us pray together in one voice. God of all nations, for creating us in all our diversity, yet calling us together in our common humanity, we offer you our thanks and praise. You speak to us with your spirit of truth. Reveal to us your loving presence and guide us to display your loving spirit in all that we say and in all that we do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And today's scripture reading comes from John chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. And I'll be reading these verses in, on behalf of the congregation. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I'll ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because he neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I'll love them and reveal myself to them. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now it's time for the children's corner. Uh, this is a short message for any children, of, um, regardless of age, as long as you identify yourself as a child of God. So, this will be the children's corner for today. I'll be talking less about the Bible stuff, but maybe a little more about what today is about. Okay? So what day is today? Does anybody know? Father's Day. <laughs> it's Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day. Um, today's Mother's Day. So what do we do on Mother's Day? I'm going to look at you. I'm going to look at the camera. For anyone who may be watching this recording after this. So yeah. Looking both ways. What's Mother's Day? What do we do? Yeah, you say, Happy Mother's Day! Yeah. On this day, you, you don't buy a birthday cake, right? You don't buy a birthday cake and, and sing Happy Birthday to our mothers. It's not Mother's Day, right? Mother's Day, we just celebrate Mother's Day and we say thank you to our mothers for everything, right? So I live in America, here, of course, and my mother lives in Korea, so we don't get to see each other very often. And can you imagine? not being able to see my mom every day. One thing I regret uh, is this, actually. Uh, I didn't say thank you or express my heart to my mom very much. I did. I still can, of course, over the phone. I try, but here's what I mean by I regret for not saying thank you to my mom. My mom uh, lived in America for 11 years, then she moved to Korea 10 years ago. And before she moved to Korea, she said 
she wanted to eat a certain dish, certain food, and it was called hamburg steak, right? Not very common here, but there's a beef patty steak. And I knew she wanted to try that dish, and I thought about going to a restaurant uh, to buy her some hamburg steak, but I was busy acting like an adult. I thought I was an adult, but I wasn't. And I eventually ran out of time. And we never ate that dish together. And she left this country 10 years ago. And it is a big regret of mine, even after 10 years, because I remember that she wanted to eat the Hamburg steak. And here's something that I want you to remember, okay? And want you to remember about Mother's Day. Two shocking truths uh, that you might not be ready to accept is that you won't always live with your mother forever. You won't always live with your mom forever. And you won't always see your mom every morning. Can you imagine? Let me walk a little closer. <laughs> what is wrong with my hearing? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> not, not, not to destroy your soul. I'm sorry, but uh, um, it's just that it's just the way life is. You won't be with your mom forever, right? And for many people, including myself, it's a privilege that lasts for the first 20 years of life. So, please do me a favor on Mother's Day. Don't be like me, who, re who regret uh, after 10 years. Please do me a favor and say thank you to your mom today. And express to your mother today how much you love her and how much she means to you. Can you please give her a hug right now? Aww. And say Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I should have done that. <laughs> yeah, anyway, Happy Mother's Day. Um, I'm, I'm very happy for the mothers at the same time. Sore spot in my heart for being uh, a not, not so good of a son. But anyway. Let's see children's corner. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you um, uh, that you give us this chance to reflect on Mother's Day. And Lord, help us to say thank you and help us to express our hearts for our mothers today. Um, because every moment together is really a, a privilege, is really a gift. We thank you. We love you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So it's, now it's time for the adults. Uh, today's message is called Jesus Through Us. So I'm going to begin uh, by talking a little bit about John. Um, today's, uh, today's passage comes from John 14, but I'm going to rewind a little bit. And just to help you understand what's going on in today's chapter because a lot is going on and some things happened before this chapter uh, and we want to understand what happened what's going on why did jesus say don't worry <laughs> why did jesus say have faith in me trust in me trust in god why did he say that and why did he say uh, the words that he said today in today's passage and what can we draw from the passage so let's rewind a couple of chapters back so this is the only way I can put it. It was a strange, it was a strange week uh, for the disciples. We're talking about about a week before Jesus died on the cross. And as, as they neared the time of crucifixion, strange things happened. And the disciples just didn't understand what was going on. It was a strange week for the disciples. Mary, Mary poured the whole 12 ounce jar of expensive perfume on Jesus' feet. 
And considering that the perfume was worth a year's wages, thousands of dollars, it made no sense for Mary to use it up like that, pouring the perfume on Jesus' feet. And Jesus seemed to be the only one who understood Mary's action because he said, leave Mary alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. And even at this time, the disciples didn't understand that Jesus had to die on the cross. And at the dinner table, Jesus was talking about his burial. And they were thinking, what is going on? The disciples didn't understand what Jesus meant by burial. Who's burial? Because Jesus was about to enter Jerusalem and free the nation from the oppressors. But then he's talking about burial. Who's burial? Too early for the Messiah to die. And Jesus also said some words that the disciples just couldn't understand. He said, Now the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into His glory. And He said, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But it's then the death of the wheat kernel will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. Could this be related to what Jesus mentioned earlier about his burial? The disciples probably thought. Earlier he talked about the burial and he's talking right now about the death of the kernel to produce many fruits. Could this be related to what he said earlier about the burial? The disciples were probably more puzzled as Jesus said these words as they neared the crucifixion. And the disciples' stress levels peaked during the last meal they had together with Jesus before the crucifixion. Right? We're talking the Last Supper. Their stress levels peaked. The things that they didn't understand, the words that they didn't understand, anxiety, confusion, they all built up over time. And if they reached the climax, at the Last Supper, because Jesus said two things that they just couldn't understand. During the Last Supper, in the middle of the meal, you know what Jesus did, according to John? Jesus predicted Judas Iscariot's betrayal. The disciples choked on the bread when Jesus said, one of you is going to betray me. And Jesus told Judas, hurry and do what you're going to do. And at once, Judas left the dinner table and went out into the night. And the before, before, the disciples even had a chance to process what was going on. They were thinking, why did he just leave? Why is he saying somebody's going to betray? What's going on? Before they had a chance to process what was going on, Jesus predicted this time. Peter's denial. When Peter said, I'm ready to die for you, Lord, Jesus said, Peter, tell you what, before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you would deny me three times. You would deny three times that you even know me. And this greatly hurt Peter, of course. He's a big man, like a strong man, but he gets hurt pretty easily. This greatly hurt Peter. But this also broke the rest of the disciples who looked up to Peter, right? This broke the whole group. Up to this point, there's a confusion, anxiety. What is he talking about? Burial, death, betrayal, what's going on? In the moment Jesus said, Peter, you're going to betray me. You're going to deny me three times that you even know me. In the moment he said that, the whole group broke. And this is when the stress levels of the disciples peaked and they broke down. The whole group was deeply discouraged and they stopped eating and drinking at the dinner table. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? We're talking a week before crucifixion. Jesus entered Jerusalem and he kept talking about the things that they didn't understand. And the things that they didn't understand kept happening. 
And he said to Peter, you're going to deny me. You're going to betray me. Judas is going to betray me. And the whole group, can you, can you imagine the morale of the whole group? It's just crashing down. Like rock bottom. The whole group was deeply discouraged because of the, all the things that they just couldn't understand and process in that short period of time. And knowing this, do you know what Jesus said? In the beginning of John chapter 14, he said, knowing this, knowing that everything was happening, Jesus said to the disciples, guys, I know this is a lot. It's a tough pill to swallow. You probably won't understand everything that's going on, everything that I said, but don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust first in me. This is what Jesus said to the disciples who are deeply discouraged. And this is also for people who are discouraged right now. Uh, although we were not present at the scene, if you are discouraged in your situation right now, if you're deeply hurt, deeply discouraged, consider these words as Jesus' words to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and also trust in me. This is the word he used to you today. And do you know what Jesus said? He said, guys, my father's house has many rooms. I'm going to the Father to prepare a place for you, and you know the way to where I'm going. And the moment Jesus said, the way, Thomas said, no, we don't know the way to where you're going. We have no idea. What is the way to the place you're going? And Jesus answered, I am the way. I am the way to the Father. Therefore, if you really know me, you will know the Father as well, because I am the way to the Father. And this time, Philip said, Lord, just show us the Father, and that's going to be enough for us. Just show us the Father. And then this time, Jesus answered, Philip, how can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? Every word that I speak, Every work that I do, it is a Father living in me who is doing His work. And how can you say, show us the Father? So believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. And anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Because I am the way to the Father. I am in the Father and the Father is in me. So anyone who sees me has seen the Father. Then in today's passage... As Jesus promised the Holy Spirit to the disciples, he said, When the Holy Spirit comes, you will realize for sure that I am in the Father. And then he added, You are in me, and I am in you. When the Holy Spirit comes, he said, You will realize that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, and you are in me, and I am in you. And we need to remember Jesus' words today. You are in me, and I am in you. What does this mean to you today? Are you discouraged? Are you happy? Or are you not so happy? Is life good? Is life not so good? <laughs> life can't be good all the time, right? I'm beginning to realize as I'm learning to become an adult. But we must remember Jesus' words. You are in me, and I am in you. That means we are no longer by ourselves. But wherever we are, in whatever situation, whatever we're going through, where we're going to be in the future, we don't know, but wherever we go, Jesus is going to be with us, in us. And to me, that's a sure promise. And do we need anything more? Probably not, because he just said, you are in me, I am in you. Can't be any closer than that. Today's Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day. Um, and I want to share a short story about my mom. So this may, uh, I don't know, maybe our younger, younger friends uh, may be able to relate to this more. 
But uh, when I was a freshman in college, about two years ago, <laughs> do, you, do you believe that? <laughs> when I was a freshman in college, 15 years ago, my mom took over a small carry-out restaurant in Baltimore City. Do you know Baltimore City? I lived in Baltimore and I, I'm familiar with Baltimore City. And I'm sure you're familiar with Baltimore City. It's a friendly place, sometimes. <laughs> but when I, was a, when I was a freshman in college, my mom took over a small carry-out restaurant in Baltimore City. And we actually knew the previous owners. But the father of the family, of the previous owners, uh, who did everything in the restaurant, he was the one who ran the restaurant, but he suddenly passed away. And the rest of the family was unable to operate the restaurant because they didn't know how. Father did everything, and then he passed away. So my mom took over the care of the restaurant, not because she was an expert, but she had some experience working in the small restaurants and delis. So she took over the restaurant. And looking back, it actually wasn't, wasn't too uncommon to see some of, some of the fathers uh, pass away. So suddenly, uh, as they often overworked to support the family and rarely took the time to care for themselves. I actually had multiple fathers um, around me in Baltimore who passed away early suddenly, sometimes due to accidents and sometimes due to um, some health conditions. And the father here happened to be one of them who just passed away suddenly, so my mother took over the store. So when my mom took over the carrier restaurant, my brother and I went there after school to help, of course. No option. Right? My mom owns a shop. I gotta go there after school to help. So I went there to help. And I was a cashier. And during the slow hours, it got really boring in the store. So I often brought my laptop, but there was no Wi-Fi in the restaurant. So things got boring. I was a cashier during the slow hours. I wanted to do something else. So I broke my laptop, but no internet. Oh no. And there wasn't much I could do on the laptop without the internet, right? I mean, can you do anything on the laptop without the internet? Probably not. Not so much. And then one day, I found a way to connect to the internet by setting my phone as a modem. This was before the smartphones existed but I found a way to set up my phone as a modem. 15 years ago, iPhone 3G just came out in 2018. Smartphones were rare back then, and personal hotspots were not available, not like today. 15 years ago, things were different. So I used my slow, I think it was 3G, <laughs> maybe slower than 3G, phone I used as a modem to connect to the internet on my laptop, bad mistake. The internet was very slow and I could surf on the web for 15 minutes or so. And again, huge mistake. Because I did not have the data point. But I used the phone data. To make it worse, I used my laptop to use the internet for 15 minutes. And I think I used Less than 50 megabytes. Are you guys familiar with the? <laughs> now I probably use less than 50 megabytes. 15 minutes. In today's standards, 50 megabytes is nothing. Maybe like five minutes of YouTube, maximum five minutes of YouTube. But my 50 megabytes of data on the laptop, from the phone with no data plan, cost me a lot of money because when we received the phone bill for that month, it was 800 dollars. Eight hundred dollars. AT and T. <laughs> and my, when my mom found out, when my mom found out, I thought she would be extremely upset. So I, I kind of like waited till the last moment. Mom, like I, I have something to tell you. you know, I didn't get into college, but I got I better news. <laughs> Eight hundred dollar bill. And when I told her, Mom, I'm sorry. I used the data. I shouldn't have, and the bill came out $800. And there was no way we could pay $800 for the phone bill. And when, when I told her, I still remember because I was so shocked, she was surprisingly calm. When I said, Mom, 
The bill for the phone came out to be $800, and she was surprisingly calm. And she comforted me, and she said, it's okay. We can take care of it somehow. Maybe we can pay, we can pay monthly. We can divide it into six, 12 payments. We'll find a way. And she was so calm, and she was so kind to me that day, so strange. We eventually called the at and and had the bill forgiven, actually. Thank God, because I admitted, I'm sorry, I, it was a mistake. I didn't know it would cost me $800. So they forgave the bill. But the way my mom took care of the situation so calmly uh, made a lasting impact on me. Because she was so calm, she was so together, and she comforted me. Oh, it's okay, the bill is 800 but we'll find a way to pay. Everyone who knows my mom tells me that I look just like her. <laughs> my brother looks my, like my father, and I look just like my mom. And I don't have a picture, I'm sorry. And I also have some of my mom's characters, uh, both positive and negative. And I'm only going to mention the positive characters here, <laughs> not the negative. My mother is resilient. My mom is hardworking. And my mom has always been consistent. And although I'm not as strong as she is, some of her characters in me help me to become the person that I am today. When people see me, they see my mother in me. When my family sees me, they see my mother in me. And when I see myself in the mirror, I flinch. <laughs> That's my mom. I see my mother in me. I can't change it, right? I can't change it. I can't change the fact that the mother is in me. And I don't need to change it. It is who I am because I am my mother's son. I am my mother's son. So my mom is in me. I can't change it. I don't need to change it. Both the positive qualities and the negative qualities, I learned to embrace them over time. It took a while. Some things about myself I didn't like. But over time, I learned to embrace the positives and the negatives because that is who I am. I am my mother's son. And although we live thousands of miles apart, I am in the United States and she's in Korea haven't seen her for 10 years. But part of my mom in me lives with me here in America. And that's a miracle. Part of my mom in ways that I recognize, in ways that I do not recognize, part of my mom in me lives with me here in America. Although we are so far apart. My mother is in me, perhaps similar to how Jesus said, you are in me and I'm in you. The characters, the inward appearance and the outward appearance of our mothers are visible in us, right? Both the inward and the outward characters of our moms are in us, visible in us. And we cannot separate from our mothers as long as we live in this body. We can't. We can't leave just who we are. We just learn to embrace over time. In the same way, as Christians, in the same way, because Jesus lives in us, his characters and who he is should be visible in us. If Jesus really lives in us, his characters must be visible in us. As Christians, we cannot separate from Jesus. It is who we are. Right? We cannot separate from Jesus. It is who we are. Jesus lives in us. And if Jesus really lives in us, there should be the visible qualities of the Savior visible in us right now. And we call that change. 
We also call it transformation. That we no longer live by ourselves. We no longer live according to who we are. But we live with Christ. And we live according to Jesus Christ. That change in the value system, that change in the vision, we call it transformation. And this change is what we need to see in ourselves. And this change must be visible for others to see. Because he said, you are in me and I am in you. The Holy Spirit will help you recognize the fact that I truly live in you, right? That means others should be able to see Jesus in us. Others should see Jesus working through us. And are we living the life of Jesus through us? And that's a question for all of us to ask ourselves. If you identify yourself as a follower of Christ, if you call yourself a Christian, when someone asks you, are you a Christian? And you say, yes, I'm a Christian. If you are a Christian, can you say, the life that I'm living right now is a life of Jesus through me? Can we say that? If we ask ourselves this question, as often as we want, in all circumstances, I'm sure we can better make decisions that make God happy. And the more we ask ourselves this question, the more we're going to be like Jesus Christ. Are we living the life of Jesus through us? So in conclusion, thank you for, thank you for your patience. In conclusion, in today's passage, Jesus said, it is God who works through him. And we must welcome Jesus and ask him to work through us in both action and speech. That's what I wanted to tell you. Because apart from Jesus Christ, we cannot do anything. Think about the branch in the vine. What can a branch do apart from the vine? Apart from the body, what can a branch do? Probably not. Nothing. Not much. So apart from Jesus Christ, we cannot do anything. So I pray, I pray that we all welcome Jesus and ask him to work through us in both an action so that others, including ourselves, may see Jesus working through us in his life, um, flourishing in ourselves. And that's what we hope to see uh, as Christians in today's world in 2023. So that's the word for today. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. Um, thank you for allowing us to uh, meditate and reflect on today's passage, and thank you for reminding us very important words. What Jesus said about us, he said, you are in me, and I am in you. And Lord, help us through the Holy Spirit that we may live the life of Christ. And help us that others may see Jesus Christ living in us. Actions speak louder than words. Help us to show through actions and help us to speak through actions that Christ is indeed alive because the world needs this message of hope. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now it's time for the presentation of offering.
And Lord, we thank you uh, for everything in our lives. And Lord, we give you these gifts in response to your grace and to everything that you provide for us in our lives. It's only a small token, but Lord, we ask you to multiply and use these gifts for your glory. Use these gifts for our friends and neighbors in need. Use these gifts to spread the life-saving message of Jesus Christ. Use these gifts for the transformation of the world. We ask you to bless our workplaces, wherever we are. And we thank you that we can give you these gifts for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And now we're going to sing a closing hymn. I'm sure we all know this hymn. Service. Um, we thank you for being with us. 
in all walks. And thank you for encouraging us through the word today. Uh, today we are greatly encouraged by the fact that you are always with us, that you are in us, that we are in you, and that we no longer have to walk in by ourselves. But Christ is with us wherever we go, in all areas, in all walks. We thank you for that. Lord, uh, this coming week, as we live another week of life, we need your help uh, to succeed. Uh, because there is only so much we can do apart from you. So, Lord, we ask for your continued guidance and your presence in our lives. And, Lord, most importantly, help us to realize how much we're loved. And as we continue to walk with you, help us to know and help us feel love more and more. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.